Hi, I am Jean Grimaldi, an endoscopy fellow at the Edouard Herriot Hospital in Lyon. During the summer period, we wanted to talk to you about adaptive traction strategy in ESD, from its first version using Butcher's Twine to the latest scientific publications, and in particular, our prospective multicenter study. To understand the problems faced by an endoscopist, we can use an, analog an analogy with a surgeon. When a surgeon wants to resect a lesion, he uses his left hand to expose the cutting plane and his right hand to resect the lesion. He therefore benefits from triangulation between his two instruments. When digestive surgeons switch to laparoscopic surgery, they retain this principle of triangulation between their instruments, whether the laparoscopy was multiport or single port, as shown here. The issue for the endoscopist is that he works with a single instrument that protrudes from the tip of his endoscope. Therefore, he doesn't benefit from, triang from triangulation. The challenge in developing ESD strategies has therefore been to overcome the endoscopist's natural lack of triangulation. This led to the development of the first traction strategies first described in Japan in 2005 by Professor Saito's team. Initially, the idea was to place a weighted clip over the lesion in an attempt to expose the submucosa with the gravitational constraints that one can imagine. For once in ESD, it's France that has developed the most traction with the work of the Lyon, Limoges and Rennes teams on the double clip traction. In 2019, this strategy was the subject of a large prospective series involving almost 600 patients with very spectac spectacular results, a R0 resection rate of 83% and a resection speed of 39 square millimeters per minute, which at the time was the highest speed described in the literature for colorectal dissection. The main problem with exist existing traction devices especially the double clip traction shown here, is that the traction force is maximum at the beginning of the procedure and decreases as the procedure progresses. To overcome this problem, we developed the attract device based on an idea from my co-resident Guijan Manu. It's an adaptive multi-traction device with four loops and a tightening system. Here is the very first version of the device made from butcher's twine on our dining room table. The principle of the tightening system hasn't changed since then. Here is an illustration of how it works. At the beginning, the four loops are attached to the four cardinal points of the lesion. Then, the rubber band is attached to the opposite digestive wall. The dissection can then begin until the tensile strength becomes insufficient. At this point, the tightening loop can be pulled to increase traction and restore an optimal exposure of the submucosal plan. Over the past two years, we have published a lot about the attract device, initially in the form of case reports that can, that can be divided into two main categories. The first are cases of lesions in particularly difficult anatomical locations, usually very difficult to resect by ESD, and where resection is made possible by, by the very high traction force provided by adaptive traction strategy. This is particularly relevant in the case of lesions invading the appendix, ileocecal valve, peritoneate line, diverticula, and diadena. The second category consists of conventional lesions whose resection is improved by adaptive traction, making them easier, safer, and faster to resect. 
Here is an example of one of the first cases we published. This was a sequel lesion, almost 15 centimeters long. The first part of the procedure was to make a circumferential incision. We then used clips to place the attract device at the four cardinal points of the lesion. Dissection could begin until traction became insufficient around halfway through the dissection. You can see here the lesion falling back on itself. And we then decided to use forceps to pull on the tightening loop. We can see here the, the wire sliding behind the cap. And we can see that the pulling force has increased significantly, allowing us to cut a maximum number of fibers with each knife cut. The submucosal exposure is here optimal to finish the dissection. And this lesion of almost 13 centimeters long was resected in 65 minutes, which, which is the fastest resection published in the literature. Last year, we published a first retros retrospective series of 54 dissections located in the stomach, diadenum, colon, and rectum with very promising results. The R0 resection rate was over 90% with only one case of perforation. We wanted to confirm the results of this first study in a prospective multicenter study in the French centers of Lyon, Limoges, and Rennes. Five operators each performed 10 consecutive ESDs of conventional colorectal lesions defined by a size comprised between 4 to 10 centimeters of long axis. Non-inclusion criteria were lesions of anatomically unconventional locations, i.e. those invading the appendix, the valve, the pectinate line, a diverticulum, lesions measuring more than two-thirds of the circumference, recurrences, and diagnostic ESDs. During the study period, 164 colorectal ESD were performed. Of these, 114 were excluded, mainly because their size was too small. Lesions were mainly granular LSTs located in the colon for 84% of them. The mean long diameter of lesions was 66 millimeters. In terms of efficacy, the end block resection rate was 100% and the R0 resection rate was 98%. The average operating time was 55 minutes, resulting in an average velocity of 61 square millimeters per minute. The perforation rate was 8%, consistent with the literature for lesions larger than 4 cm. All were managed endoscopically without the need for surgery. In 20% of cases, the Atrax device failed, mainly due to clips detaching during tightening. The dissection speed found in our study is the highest reported in the literature to date for colorectal ESD. The comparison with the previously mentioned study using double clip traction is particularly interesting because it was performed by the same five operators and the lesions were also conventional. This study found a speed of 39 square millimeters per minute and the R0 resection rate of 83%. The comparison is also interesting with the reference study on the pocket strategy, which found a speed of 23 square millimeters per minute. However, as the lesion selection criteria in the different studies are not identical, these comparisons must be made with great caution. We talk a lot about resection speed, but what does it mean in practice? We could take the example of a lesion measuring 5 by 5 centimeters. If resected at the speed found in the pocket strategy reference study, it will be resected in 80 minutes. 
If we now resected it at the speed found in the double slip traction study, it will be resected in 50 minutes. Finally, if resected at the speed found in our adaptive traction strategy study, it will be resected in, in 33 minutes. And we think that the speed of 61 square millimeters per minute would bridge the gap between EMR and ESD in terms of intervention duration. Our study has certain limitations, mainly in terms of external validity, the operators being experts, and the lesions selected. The number of 50 ESDs is also too small to assess rarely occurring events, such as adverse events, with any relevance. To conclude, the adaptive traction strategy with the ATTRACT device seems effective and safe for the treatment of conventional colorectal lesions. We now need for comparative studies with larger numbers of patients. Future studies will have to take into account the constant evolution of the device from the first version in our dining room to the current and made device, and finally to the industrialized version currently under development which will further optimize and facilitate the use of the device.